Now, this is probably the, one of the more exciting aspects of what Dr. Erdogan has done here at ASMED. Uh, so we're here with the KBOT, which is a, an artificial intelligence imaging system that was actually designed uh, by Dr. Erdogan and this young man right here, <laughs> Osan, yeah. who is an electrical engineer, uh -huh. and he, he specializes in Im imagery and artificial intelligence, yeah. and he's just put all this together. Yeah. So uh, this is the camera, is that right? Yeah. Okay. It's and not a single camera, actually, it's a camera system, let's say. It's a camera system. Yeah, yeah okay. so more than one camera, actually. And, and, you're, and when you analyze an image of a patient, yeah. uh, you create this 3D model. Yeah. Is that uh, correct? Yes. At the first step of this procedure, we create a 3D model of the hat. Yeah. Uh, so this is what the camera is doing right now. Uh, we are taking samples and we are generating a 3D model of the hat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just to clarify, this is, this is not a real patient. If it were a real patient, his head would be shaved. Sure. And uh, so this young man has, has kindly allowed us yeah. to place him into the chair, where he has to stay absolutely still for how long? Uh, actually, at the pre-op, it will be roughly five minutes. Uh, at the post-op time, we will we will be total of at the end of we will have twelve to forty minutes. Oh wow! Yeah, but so, we will we will separate this post-op stage into two phases. So it will be five minutes plus five minutes. Five minutes for donor area, five minutes for uh, recipient area. Yeah, and so that's actually a very important uh, uh, modification to what you've done thus far for mm -hmm. your. Uh, your system mm -hmm. is that you you began uh, by imaging and 3D modeling all at once. Yeah, and it took much longer. Sure. Right. Yeah. Uh, and actually, uh, capturing 3D model or generating 3D model is the simplest part, relatively. But after generating 3D model, we are placing the robot into proper position and capture images uh, more than 400 images. So right. it is a very huge amount of data, mm. it takes too much time to grab it and process it. Yeah. So we are making some modifications, making some improvements to reduce this time without sacrificing the performance, the detection performance, the counting or measurement performance. Yeah, and so I, I, you know, I've been picking your brain here for a couple of days yeah. and trying to understand the complexities that you've gone to to, to, to implement uh -huh. this system uh -huh. and perfect it. Uh -huh. um, you know, from my understanding, one of the greatest drawbacks is that if the patient moves, uh -huh. it distorts the uh, the accuracy of the data. Is that correct? Yes, a little bit. Uh, we accept we, what we expect expect from patient to stand still during the scanning, because we gen after we generating 3D model, uh, we position the robots according to this initial data. If it if he moves uh, during this time, it will uh, it will actually uh, reduce or increase our uh, calculation a little bit. Yeah, uh, we have some actually uh, reactions for this. We actually can track the hats, but it will increase time. We're actually planning those things as a future work. Oh man, I tell you. So what you what you've done is you've you've split it up into two into two com uh, uh, components. One is uh, a scanning um, and 3D modeling yeah. that you've broken up into two five-minute segments. Is that is that right? Uh, like that? Two segments. Uh, uh, so you give the patient a break in between sure, scans. Sure, sure, sure. 3D model is also uh, used to measure the area. Right. We have to calculate the area to compute the coverage value. Uh, it is quite important so that we also use this 3D model to measure the area because this area is not a planar surface, so we have a actually different ge shape, so we have to calculate the geodesic distance or geodesic area. Uh, we use this 3D model for this purpose as well. Right. Uh, and also, road planning is done based on this 3D data. Mm -hmm. So we decide where to place the robot based on this 3D data, because the, the shape of that differs from patient to patient, so we have to put the camera correct place for each patient, so we use 3D data at this time for this purpose as well. Yeah, so in order to get more accurate data, you give the patient a break. Yeah. They can kind of move yeah. around, yeah. relax, yeah. have a cup of coffee, yeah. come back and do yeah. the next yeah. scan. Yeah. 
Now, as I understand it, you, you've also broken it up. You, you had an ingenious idea to, to like skip every other image. Yeah. So you've gone from a total of, of uh, let's say 200, 250 images just for the donor area alone. Uh -huh. Down to about 100 by skipping yeah. One, yeah. One, one image, every other image. Yes, uh, our analysis, we actually analyze all those data we captured mm -hmm. during two years. Actually, we have plenty of patient data and we analyze all those things. Our observations reveal that it is not required to capture all uh, area on the head because there are some similar characteristics, some certain regions. Right next door is the same. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the neighbor blocks, mm -hmm. our neighbor images has similar characteristics. Yeah. So in order to uh, make the system faster, we skip one images at each scanning line okay. so that we increase our processing time without sacrificing our performance. That's, a, that's amazing. So, I mean, you got to understand this. To, to do the whole head, uh -huh. You do 400 images. Yeah. Imagine taking 400 different sure. pictures yeah. of this scalp yeah. to, to collect this data. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it, it, it's, it's even more impressive when you understand how they've progressed with the artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the head is not uh, you know, a squared object. It's, yeah. it's three-dimensional. Yeah. Uh, just to be able to, to evaluate the three-dimensional surface area alone, is a huge advancement in what we're doing in hair restoration surgery. So I, uh, I tip my hat to you, man. It's very important what Thank you're doing. You. you know, you. this has the potential to calculate the total surface area we're dealing with, yeah. the total number of flicking units that yeah. are available to transfer, yeah. the total number of hairs that are available to transfer, the diameter of the hair that yeah. we can move, and that all lets us plan a surgery mm -hmm. uh, specifically to this individual patient's characteristics. Yeah. And you scan not only the donor area, but the recipient area. Sure. So we get it all. Yeah, yeah. you get the whole picture, a whole uh, data available, whole in information you can extract from the patient. Yeah. So you know how many graphs you have, how many hairs you have, how many hair in each graph you have, how, uh, how much uh, thickness you have in each hair, so you have all the data. It's up to your imagination what you can do on, those, on this using yeah, this data. It's unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable. Now, you've taken it a step further. It, not only do you calculate the total number of hairs that are there, mm -hmm. you go in and evaluate the total number of extraction sites in the donor area yeah. after a procedure, yeah. correct? After the procedure, uh, we have some incision holes at the back at mm -hmm. the donor area and we have uh, the planted holes, uh, planted grafts in the recipient area. So we compute how many incisions are performed at your uh, donor area and how many of them are planted on your recipient area yeah. so that it can be possible to compute the transaction rate, total transactions. That, that's amazing. And so, or, or the missing graph rate. Yeah. So we, we, ought, we get the number of, of holes. Uh -huh. we, get the, we know our number of graphs after yeah. we take the graphs out. Yeah. So we can calculate any, any, any missed opportunity. Yeah. And you scan the recipient area and you get the total number of incisions that yeah. graphs that were placed. Yeah. So it's, 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 it gives you everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, additionally, uh, we also can compute the punch size because really? uh, th there are different sizes of punches, mm. 0 0.8, 0 0.7, well, one millimeter punch. Uh -huh. yeah. So as we have images of those things at a very high resolution, right. it is possible to uh, determine the punch size as well. So we can say what, uh, which size of punch are used during your operation. If well, you're, actually, going, you're going to calculate the wound size. Yeah, yeah, total And from secret, that, yeah. you can yeah. probably yeah. Uh, determine the punch size. Yeah. But wound size and punch size are going to be a little different yeah. because you size it at an sure, angle. Sure. But uh, it's an amazing uh, uh, piece of equipment. I, I know I want one. I know I want one. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, thank you very much. Proud of you, man.